Hi everyone, welcome back. Nicole here with Edge of Wild and tonight I am pruning up my tomatoes so I figured I would bring you along. I have my prunes and then I have some tomato twist ties. So this is just a soft wire tie or a soft coated wire tie that I can use to tie the tomatoes to the trellis. I am going through and pruning blinded by the sun. I am going through and pruning off like all of the bottom branches so that way nothing is touching the dirt because where the leaves touch the dirt that's where you're likely going to end up with disease and honestly it just gives them better airflow the cherry tomatoes that are by the snapdragons i'm pruning them pretty hard on the bottom because i want there to be airflow around the snapdragons as well i have plenty of cherry tomatoes and they i'm I'm unconcerned. Turn this way. I'm unconcerned. I can use it as sunglasses. There we go. Um, about the cherry tomatoes making enough. They they will they'll be fine. By the time the cherry tomatoes really take off, honestly, like in production, the snaps will be done, so you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm gonna set up down here in the shade of the peas um, to start with, just because. But here is one of the cherry tomatoes. Plenty tall enough to tie to the trellis. We can see it's really, it's got a lot of lot going on down there. A lot of foliage. And that can hold moisture. That can hold disease. The foliage is touching the dirt. That can bring disease up the plant. So we're just going to do some pruning to get rid of it. And it, it's going to seem harsh, but I promise it's fine. Okay, let's see if I can get this trimmed out so you can see. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this so that hopefully you can see. So, just like that, I'm going to take that whole branch off. And then, I'm going to start down here. And I'm going to take off this branch. This one. I'm going to go all the way down. Pretty much down to the bottom. And come back up. And I'm taking off both the branch and the sucker. Now on a cherry tomato, really, you don't need to prune all those suckers off. You really want them because that's where a lot of the fruit's going to come from. But, where I am starting here, I don't want that much. So I've really trimmed that down. Um, you can see pretty much down to like nothing. And then up here, it's more or less got this leaf, this leaf, and then where it's still, it's got its growth point. So what I will do now is I will take my tie. Hope I have the right end. I'll pull out a piece. put it in the little cutter and then I'm just gonna tie it to the cattle panel I'm not like literally gonna tie it I'm going to loosely wrap this and then then I can wrap a nice tight wrap around the cattle panel and just make it so it stays in the wind and everything but also make sure it's not gonna cut growth off on the plant Voila. One tied up in my volunteer sunflower. We'll see how big this gets. Okay, just gonna keep going. Again, I know this seems really harsh, but this foliage touching the, the ground all the way down here is really what's gonna bring on disease early on in the season. Uh, we have some rain coming. That splash of that rain will cause that disease to move up the plant. It's just better for airflow, better for the health of the plant. To get it all trimmed up. Better for my snapdragons and the tomato. To have all that airflow around them. So that they can, all the plants can breathe. Now, cleaning out the armpits on a cherry tomato really, really isn't necessary. But, the 
because I plant them so close together, I do like to clean them up a little bit. Okay, and I will leave the rest of the foliage on that. Grab my tie here. And then I'm just going to pull it over. And like I said, loosely wrap it. So here on this striped German tomato, same story, I'm going to clean up the bottom. Now you will see here, I did not keep up with pruning off the suckers as much. And this whole branch here is a sucker that's grew out of this armpit that would like totally take over and be willing to be a plant. However, I am not interested in that, nor do I want to decapitate the actual leading stem out of this plant. So I'm going to clean off these bottom branches. I'm going to clean that sucker right out of there. So it's huge. But I don't want, I don't really want that. That one we're going to leave. Leave the rest of that. And then I'm going to tie that to the trellis. Everything else looks to be up off the ground, so I'm happy. Now a sucker, like I just cut off that striped German, you could easily take this and just honestly probably even just stick it in some like potting soil, wet dirt, or put it in some water. Because all of these little hairs, those are all roots. So this would root and take off and actually turn into a great tomato plant. This one might be a little big, so it might get a little angry at you, but I bet you it would transplant well. So if you wanted to have a second planting or a second group of tomatoes, in case something got sick or something went after them, you could easily take some of these suckers that get out of control and plant them up and have a whole nother round of plants. Tomatoes are pretty amazing like that. So as I go down the row, you'll see everything will start to... There starts to be a lot more space. It won't have so many branches. The benefit of keeping on top of trellising them up and pruning them is the fact that not only is there more airflow for the plants, there's more space for you to move. Um, one of the other things I will say that is recommended, you can choose to do it whether you want to or not. Um, but I would say to leave some for sure. They claim... You don't want to trim the foliage above any of the blooms because that foliage helps to shade the fruit so it doesn't get sunburnt. Um, I usually don't trim much above it, if any. There might be some that I trim, but not a lot. The other thing that I do that may or may not be recommended, but it has worked for me, is say like this leaf that's too long and is touching the ground. Like here's an example. That one's really long and it's like touching the ground. I don't really want it that long, but I also don't want to take the whole thing off. I'll take out the sucker, but I can cut it. I don't know where my clippers went, but I could cut it like here, something like this. And then that would be cut off. I no longer have to worry about it touching the ground, but it still has some of that foliage there for the plant to take up sunlight, do photosynthesis. So two plants that I am going to treat a little differently are these mountain fresh. 
because these are a determinate variety, trimming off the suckers or trimming a bunch of the plant, you are giving up fruit. Now, they don't get as big. Um, honestly, I think last year, like, they made them barely got halfway up the trellis. However, I am going to trim some of this lower, lower stuff because, again, I really don't want to deal with the disease. So I'll take off these branches, but I'll be more apt to leave these suckers because these branches aren't going to turn into anything and aren't going to produce the fruit. But these suckers here in the armpit, those will. I'm going to trim that leaf down. And then voila. There's that one. And then as for this one, same thing. I'll trim off that leaf, but leave that sucker. I'm going to take that sucker off. We have suckers literally growing right out of the ground on this one. And then that's about all I'm going to take off of that one as well. So nowhere's near as cleaned up as the other ones. And then, like I said, I will leave those suckers on them. Um, I don't know. I think we're just going to stick that leaf over there. I don't think that one's totally ready to be tied yet. This one I could probably tie. So it is important to know if you have a determinate or a non-determinate, indeterminate, non-determinate, indeterminate variety tomato because that really determines how much pruning you really want to do on the plant. So I finally did a little bit of research and figured out that my missing tomato plant was one of the Valentines or the orange ones. That's what this one is here. I wanted to make sure before I trimmed this one that it wasn't an, an extra mountain fresh. Um, I popped in one of the volunteer tomatoes that I found growing when I was weeding. Odds are that's a cherry tomato. I'm willing to bet probably is. Uh, just kind of looking at the stem, like it's not super thick. It's a lot more spindly, kind of like a cherry tomato. So we'll see. We'll see what kind it is. Who knows? It could be some kind of magical variety. I don't know. Or could be terrible. We shall see. I'm going to trim up the rest of these and then I have to finish. I did some of the cherry tomatoes last night so like that one's done. Oh look more baby more baby tomatoes. Little baby tomatoes and those are the, sh the super sweets. Super sweet 100s right there. That's exciting. Now the part that I will say is hard about tomatoes, little tomatoes, big tomatoes, all tomatoes, as long as it took from you putting the seed like in the soil to start growing, to get the tomatoes to show up, you still got that much time to go before the tomato ripens. So I put these in what, April, it's now June, so they've been growing probably two months, so I'm probably still six weeks away from a ripe tomato but that gives me hope they're growing all right i have them all trellised up now you can kind of see the difference i know it's getting dark I'm losing light here fast but you can kind of see like there's just so much more space to walk down the aisles and the tomatoes just look happier that one's still little but this way a lot more airflow and we can't see it as well I'll try to grab a couple clips in the morning too um, you can just see around the cherry tomatoes more this one here, 
I didn't even know I had. I thought it was a volunteer and I was like, oh, I should pull that. And then I was like, oh, wait, that was planted on purpose. You can kind of see like the stem bends like way back in there and it had settled into the cherry tomatoes. So here's a better shot of the tomatoes all cleaned up and in daylight. So you can see you can walk down the aisle and way more airflow space underneath them. I know the cherry tomatoes, it's still hard to see because there's just so much so much foliage backing them, but they're actually tied onto the trellis. And just looking much happier. As my husband likes to say, Twilight Gardening. I'm losing light fast. I will grab some clips in the morning that show the tomatoes a little bit better so you can kind of see like the detail and not just the dark blob of the fact that I can walk through this row. There's a lot more air. Leaves aren't touching the ground so I should have less disease. All of that good stuff. The cherry tomatoes, I will not prune as hard again. I might trim them a little bit because I am one person eating off of 12, 13, maybe 14 cherry tomato plants. Like, I have plenty. I can trim them up. Um, so it's not something I really have to worry about. However, you don't really want to trim that heavily on them because you will lose fruit. They put a lot of fruit on those suckers that branch out. I also will not trim the determinate tomatoes heavily again, but I will prune on the tomato, like all of my other large tomatoes I will prune on. Keep those trellis up and keep the leaves trimmed back. Not necessarily all the way back to the stem, but I'll probably trim them shorter just so that I can walk in between them. And I will pull off, I can't say all, but I'm going to say like 98% of the suckers for as long as I can because that just keeps more air space between them and that's why I'm able to put them so close together. Thanks for coming along. I hope you learned something about pruning tomatoes, trellising them up, and I hope you have a wonderful week. See you in the next one.